I always love hearing artists I wouldn't know of if I didn't do this channel. I certainly wouldn't know of this guy, but apparently he is a legend in Brazil and uh, I'm really interested to hear a little bit more. I have no idea what I'm about to hear right now. Eu desço dessa solidão, espalho coisas sobre o chão de giz. Yes, deck tone. A menos avaneios todos a me torturar. So he first wrote this song in 1978 and um, he is a guy who, you know, actually I, I don't have the lyrics at all for this, but... Um, I'm sure he's got some brilliant lyrics. He wrote a lot of kind of folk tales before he became a composer. Um, I'm not sure if he had quite as much depth to his voice back in 1978, but he certainly has that feeling of like living a life. His voice tells the tale of his, his life just by a few notes. Fotografias recortadas Em jornais e folhas A miúde Oh, lovely vibrato Eu vou te jogar Num pano de guardar confetes Oh Oh Desmaro balas you know what I love about a lot of Brazilian singers is that there's an emphasis on warmth and tone. I say that as someone who has like a high, <laughs> a high thinner voice, I guess. Um, so, you know, Brazil probably wouldn't love me, but um, I feel like that's, it's so different than um, over here where a lot of the emphasis is on being able to sing high, especially belting high um, with um, with a filled tone, but it's not about that kind of depth anymore. And I think both styles, I think all styles of singing really have their merits and they just show that person's soul, really. <laughs> Há tantas violetas velhas Sem um colibri Queria usar, quem sabe Uma camisa de força Ou de Vênus Mas não vou gozar de nós Apenas um cigarro you know what, I really love how he's using his vibrato. In some places it's really smooth, there's no vibrato, and then some places he wants to make it sound sung, and it sounds very, um, like, regal. Da, da, da. Using that vibrato the entire way through. Um, you know, vibrato is such a beautiful stylistic thing to use. Using none can make things sound very tribal and connected to yourself sometimes he's not using that it makes it sound quite spoken sometimes he's just putting a little bit on the end which just makes it a little bit more polished but here when he's using that kind of big open space it's very regal singing vibrato the entire way through <laughs> And grit.
Agora pego o hum. caminhão na lona, vou lá nocaute outra Tell vez. me a story. Like, ah, uh, it's, this is the opposite of my voice. I think it's what I love about low singers because it feels like so, I mean, it is unachievable for me. So, um, yeah, I, I think that uh, I say this a lot in my videos. I love looking at singers that I know things are not achievable um, in my voice. But it's not something to be sad about. It's something just to be like, this, this embodies him. And my voice embo embodies me in many ways. And it changes as I age. Because I change as I age. Um, and I'm sure it's been the same with him. That's why I'm interested to hear, like, 1978 version of this. Because I'm sure it's really, really different. He feels like a man that evolves. <laughs> Meus 20 anos de boy That's over, baby <risos> Freud explica Não vou me sujar Fumando apenas um cigarro Nem vou me beijar Gastando assim o meu batom So another interesting fact about him is that he um, tried to get a record label to begin with and was turned down. Um, and again, another inspiring story. This happens with so many great artists. One, when you're first starting out, you're you're learning, you're learning your music, you're learning your craft, and. Um, you know it you might not be you know as good as you will end up being and that's okay um you will get there it takes time and also maybe if you're doing something that's truly unique sometimes it just takes other people a bit longer to understand um that it's you know this different thing will work because especially uh, places that are making money, corporate places, you know, it's not so much about the art, it's often just about, oh, are we going to make money from this? So until they can see that, then um, sometimes it can be difficult to get them on board, but it doesn't mean that you won't. It just, you have to sometimes prove yourself a little bit more if you're doing something a little bit more unusual and um, it will come. And, there, and these days, it's so much easier. We have ways to prove that our unique ways can can work. You know, we have the internet, we have YouTube, we have TikTok or whatever your form of uh, social media is. You can prove that to people um, if you need to. popular. <laughs> No mais, estou indo embora. No mais, <laughs> e no mais. I'm sure that record label is not going to like. Oh. Well, I made a mistake. It got me thinking about self-belief, about putting yourself out there. I often find that, you know, people can be both sides of the coin. Sometimes you have people that need to really work on their craft and haven't done that work yet and um, have got loads of self-belief and therefore get themselves into really good places. 
or people who have honed their craft and they're just so good and don't have that self-belief and don't get their music to the places that it should go. And the people that are really successful are the ones that combine both of those things. But self-belief is equally important as honing your craft. Um, it's just not the only thing, but it's equally important and it's something that, um, you know, while you're working on your music, if you're someone working on your music, that's something it, that you need to be working on too. And getting yourself to the places where people can hear that amazing music that you've been working on. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.